Santa Ladies English YouTube channel. I hope this is the English YouTube channel because it would be pretty pointless if it goes out on the French one. But in light of Seb's throat operation, he has enlisted the help of me. My name is Paul Wallace, I run the Supercars of London YouTube channel and this is my 2017 Nissan GTR. And well, today I want to do something that I've not even done on my channel, which is rank this car in and amongst all of the other cars that I've owned. I'm going to do a quick loop around very close to where I live. Hopefully warm some tyres up on this car. Get some noise. Go underneath the tunnel right now. <laughs> I actually haven't filmed this car that often on my channel. I drive it a lot and I take it various places, but I've got a few plans with it, and that's when I'm gonna be making videos on my own channel. So after this video, this car probably would have featured more on Seb's channel than it has on mine. But anyway, we will do our best. So I bought this car in September 2020, and over the years on my channel, I've owned a variety of supercars and high performance daily drivers, BMW M3s, Mercedes AMG C63s, and I have a lot of fun modding them. And Seb is known as well for having very loud cars like his 430 Scooter Rear. And whilst this isn't that loud, it's bloody good. I bought this car without actually driving a 2017, which was the facelift year of the R35 GTR. I hadn't driven one on the roads. The only Nissan GTR that I had driven on the roads was a Nismo, which is useless. The suspension is so stiff, it is set up for track days and track days only. But this car has got a comfort mode. In 2017, Nissan were like, look, the 2009 car was great, it was successful, it basically destroyed all of the supercars that were out at its time, but our customers are complaining that it's not very good on a daily basis, it's not very practical, it's definitely not a comfortable car. So they redid the interior, they made the uh, suspension softer, they made the slow speed gear shift smoother as well, which makes for an all round better package, and I love it. This is the same sort of price as you can buy a BMW M5 competition that's a year old. Talk about depreciation. Um, amongst other things like uh, Seb's Audi R8 V10 Plus manual. So there are a lot of competition when it comes to the Nissan GTR. And I've had three Lamborghinis. I've had a Gallardo, a Huracan, and my Murcielago, which I currently own now and love. But it's up for sale figure that one out. Um, I've also had a Mercedes AMG GTS, I've had a C63, a BMW M3, all sorts of different price points. But this does the daily stuff very well, like what the BMW M3 did. It does that perfectly. But then it does the silly stuff that the Mercedes C63 did as well, if not better. Definitely with a little bit more safety with the four wheel drive system. So whilst this is still an 11 year old car coming on 12 years old, <laughs> it's so much faster than the stupid daily drivers that I've had. It's up there with the Lambos, but it still ticks the box of being quite a practical car on a day to day basis. So I loved my Hurricane. It was such an easy supercar to own. It did everything. Apart from the fact that I put 7,000 miles on it in six months. And at that sort of time as well, I was looking at buying property with my girlfriend. So we ended up selling it so that we could move into the place that we live in now. The Murcielago is just an out and out stupid supercar. V12 thrills without any of the practicalities. <laughs> So for 60 grand, it kind of fits in between the C63s and the M3s that I had, and the Mercedes AMG GTS.
GTS. And the GTS was the one car that I sold too soon. I'd modified it, I'd made it stupid fast, rear wheel drive, but the GT Touring Comfort that you could get from the likes of a Bentley Continental GT. So this, I think, sits closer to a Mercedes AMG GT than it did the BMW M3. And there's one car that I've missed out on talking about, which is actually a recent addition to the Supercars and London YouTube channel, a recent addition that was also the quickest car that I've ever sold, my M2 competition. I thought I could get a lot of the thrills that I got from my M3 in a smaller package, and whilst I transformed it into a car that looked cool, didn't gel with it. Didn't particularly like it driving fast, hated it driving it slow. I wish I had bought a manual so that I could have just gone out and hooned it at a manual gearbox. It was the right package, the right power, had a great sound, looked the part. The DCT gearbox tricked my brain into thinking that I could cruise around like I can in this car. Take it out, put it into comfort mode, cruise around like this. When I picked this up, it made me realize how frustrated I was at owning the M2 competition. So I sold the M2, I now have this car as my sole car that sits with me where I live. The Lamborghini is currently for sale at Tom Hartley, Carl Hartley, and it has been there for the last month. Now in the UK, we're in lockdown, so there aren't that many people buying 10 year old Italian supercars. There's a lot of thought that goes into buying a car like that. So I'm not worried, I'm happy for it to sit there. I can't really drive anywhere in the UK apart from doing a few laps to make some videos. There's not a lot going on and availability wise of places to go, events to be at. The Lamborghini really is quite a redundant car at the moment. So it sat at the dealership and hopefully one day we'll get sold. But that's an introduction to my Nissan GTR. I love this thing and I will be making videos on my channel that go into more depth about things I love and things that I would like to change about it. But I've since owned this car since September 2020. We're now at the end of January going into February. So I've had the car October, November, December, January. Five months coming on six and I've not modified it yet, which is a first. This car stock is as good as it needs to be. Oh, the one car that has all of the modifications available to it, a thousand brake horsepower, flame throwing exhaust systems, Liberty Walkers, you name it, the options are endless on this car. But it's too good stock to muck around with it. What is going on? I turned 30 this month, January. And uh, might have to admit that I'm growing up, which is very sad. But I'm going to have to make up for it. One way or another, I'm going to have to make up for it. Uh, but taking this car out for a quick drive on some very dirty roads in the UK is the least that I could do for Seb. I speak to him on a daily basis. I'm sure I'll get the cameras back out and I will appear on his channel again in the not too distant future. But I hope you are having the best time you possibly can with what's going on in the world, wherever you are. I think the only comfort that we can take is everyone else is in the same boat. We are all dealing with it and experiencing with this global pandemic and that the fundamentally we are all in this together so we can all be supportive, help each other, be kind to everyone and uh, it's probably the right message to end on. Hopefully you've enjoyed a quick insight into some of the cars that I've owned. If you've never seen my channel before then head over to Supercars of London. If you have then I'm sure I will be seeing you very very soon but ladies and gentlemen take care. Leave a comment below whether you think this is a super cool car, whether you would own this over something like a C63 or an Audi R8. If you had 60 grand to spend on a car that did as many things as you could ask it to, supercar performance, daily driver, reliable, cheap to run, what car would you pick? I'd pick this and I'm pretty happy with my decision.